Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Look, if you get opportunity, please subscribe, share us with your friends. That's the only thing that keeps this channel alive, and it also motivates us to continue to do great things and to provide information for you. And we hope you find it interesting and also helpful. Now, today we're gonna make some brandy. Now, brandy is a long, not a long process, but this is gonna take a couple of weeks, several weeks as a matter of fact. Uh, but brandies are distilled, a distilled spirit that's normally distilled from a fruit. Now, now there's all ty different types of brandies, but today we're gonna do a combination of fruits, because I thought about doing one fruit and then doing another. I said, well, why don't I just do a good combination of fruits so they can get a whole lot of fermentable sugars. So here's what I got. I've got two large watermelons. I've got three sweet cantaloupes, the yellow type. And I've got about 20 pounds of these Fuji apples. Now, in your grocery store, uh, there'll probably be a list up there that'll tell you what the sweetness level. Try to find the sweetest apple you can for the, for the cost, uh, of course. And, and these are very sweet. They're really on the, high on the chart, but they're not the highest. Uh, and I think I paid $1.80 something a pound for them. So I got 20 pounds of these and I've got three pounds of fresh strawberries. Uh, that's just an added buffer. That, that's all that is. I had three pounds of strawberries. They were on sale, so I grabbed those. Now, what we haven't talked about before is, oh, wait a minute. Let me show you what else I have here. I've got my 30 liter uh, fruit press. Uh, you may not have a fruit press and that's okay. There are several ways to do this, but I'm gonna use the fruit press to show you how that operates. Uh, and we're gonna squeeze all the juices out of that. Um, the other things you'll probably need is what I call a B-A-K, a big ass knife. Um, that and then some scoops, and I'm gonna use this, this an ice cream scoop, just a regular scoop and a big old spoon, a B-O-S. Uh, and I'm gonna use these just to, like for the core of the apple, just to get the core of the apple out and pull out some of those seeds because I don't want to crush the seeds in there. I've also got a pH meter, and this is something we haven't discussed in great detail before, but uh, we always make it a habit of trying to make sure that we adjust our pH of our mash uh, before we distill. So I think it's important to cover this topic real quick. Now pH, uh, the level of pH in water, uh, the scale is 1 to 14, 7 being balanced. So if you've got a pH of 7.2, it's a little bit more alkaline. If you've got a pH below 7, it's a little bit more acidic. Make sense? So 7 is your sort of like your zero data point. So center being the middle, you've got one through seven is acidic, and then seven through 14 is alkaline. Uh, now for a mash, the proper pH level or the most effective pH level is about 5.2. And normally our water, I know our city water is like 7.8, 7.6. So you have to do something to bring that back down. So I've got this, uh, pH stabilizer is called 5.2 pH stabilizer. You can get it at almost any brew shop, but it's a really good source. So it's, it's sort of like a pop in and forget. It's a tablespoon per five gallons, uh, and it'll bring your pH level back down to where it's supposed to be. So what I recommend you do is you test your water prior to, adjust the pH, add all of your ingredients, give it about 10 minutes or so, so we can fluctuate and do all of what it's gonna do sitting in there and then test your pH again. And if you have to adjust it down to 5.2, throw a little bit more in. Now, there are some other options. The other options are uh, lemon juice works, uh, but you've gotta be careful about how much lemon juice you put in. You know, a fresh lemon, just squeeze the juice in uh, and then stir it and then check your pH. Uh, gypsum will also, gypsum has the potential to drop or to lower your pH but uh, my recommendation is not to rely on it too much because gypsum is there in a lot of mashes to increase the hardness uh, of the water. So those are the, uh, those are the tips and tricks I got for you today so far. Now, what I've learned <coughs> and I'll share with you is that uh, I, I know in other videos we've done the uh, conversion of starches to fermentable sugars. Uh, the interesting thing about melons, apples, and strawberries is there is very little residual starches left over because they're picked when they're ripe, which means all the starch inside here has already converted and that's why it's sweet. And it's already converted to fermentable sugars. So to use amylase or to use a grain 
to attempt to uh, extract any more of those residual starches is probably a futile effort. So that's where we're at. Now I got a lot of work to do here. You can see my guard. Uh, he don't talk much. Uh, we're gonna, I gotta take all of these green shoots off of these strawberries. I'm gonna have to cut core and chop up my apples. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing with the melon and the watermelons. And then we're gonna get to work on crushing these things, getting the juice out of them. I'll show you every bit of that. Uh, and then of course, of course, we're gonna check our gravity and then we're gonna pitch our yeast and then we're gonna let that ferment. And at the end of all of that, we'll come back with another video and we'll run our brandy. All right, I've got them all, that was a long process. Now I've got them all cut up and I've, I quartered all of them. So they fill about a 6.8 gallon bucket. And so that's quite a bit of apples. Now, one thing I've learned from the past is that when you try to squish these, they're really, really hard. It takes a lot of energy, a lot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil them, uh, probably about 20 or 30 minutes. And I'm gonna use a propane uh, burner out here and I'm gonna put them in a great big pot and boil them just to soften up the apples. That makes squishing them that much easier. Plus, the water I've got in there will start to absorb a lot of those sugars and that's what we want. And then while that's going on, I'm gonna cut up this uh, watermelon, the cantaloupe and the strawberries and I'm gonna move on down the road. now. Uh, bring up a good point. And remember the pH meter I used? You don't have to use a pH meter. Now you can get those little strips that people use to test their pool uh, from Walmart. They're just a couple of dollars for a small can of them. And they're just a pH, there's a test strip. It'll test a whole bunch of stuff, but you're concerned with pH. Uh, it's a real cheap way, it's a, or inexpensive way of, of testing the pH. It's not as accurate, but man, it really puts you in the ballpark. So you know you're gonna have to be below seven. You're looking at for 5.2. But if you've got a pH test strip, you can test it. it. It really puts you in the ballpark. So you don't absolutely have to have one of these meters unless you're trying to be absolutely calibrated and perfect at that. Uh, we'll be with you shortly. Well, you can see that I've got, what I've done is I've put all of the strawberries and the melons and the watermelon, and I put those into a, a straining bag. Um, a lot of times you use this for grain or for anything, but I put it in a straining bag because as you crank this down and it starts to push and it press all that fruit, uh, I don't want it to start to pop out and shoot out the side. So I just put it in a bag. It's a whole lot easier to control, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. You can see it's starting to drain. And uh, this thing works so neat because it clicks down. It's just like a ratchet. Well, after that process, what I've got now, I've got watermelon, mushmelon, or cantaloupe sweet. Um, I've also got apples and I've got strawberries. And you see here, I've got these, this mush in both of these. Now, there's probably about two gallons of water in there with it too, but I've got it really good and mushed up. So you'll see, it's like when I boiled those, those apples, they just fell apart, just, just like potatoes would. So you can, you can mash it up. Now, what I'm gonna do, and I normally don't do this, but I'm gonna bring up the water level. And I'm gonna leave the fruit in here this time uh, even though I've already squeezed, I squeezed all the juice out of it, and then I've added more water back to it, and I'll show you the juice in just a minute. The, um, oh, well, except for the apple juice, that's still in the pot. And uh, what I'll do is I'll bring it up, and then I'm going to test the, um, the pH level, and I'm also going to test the gravity, so that'll give us an idea of uh, our predictability on the potential alcohol by volume. We'll be back with you shortly. I have the strawberries, the watermelon, and the cantaloupe, marshmallow, and the sweet ones, they were yellow. Uh, all the juice that I squeezed out of them is in here. So I've got a little bit over a gallon, it looks like, or maybe almost, well, a gallon and a half, uh, plus what I got in this cup and what I've got in my cylinder. And I tested the gravity and it, it reads 1.025, or almost 1.030, 1.025. So I've got quite a bit of fermentable sugars in here. Now I will have to add some more uh, corn sugar just to just to boost up the alcohol percentage, but that's going to be very very flavorful. And now we're going to check the pH, and I'm predicting that because of the acidity, some of the acidity that's in the strawberry, this will probably be below the seven. And remember we talked about that. You know the, the scale is one to fourteen, seven being neutral. Uh, it's called base, uh, and then one being very acidic, and fourteen being very alkaline. 
So what we're looking for, we're trying to get down to about 5.2, 5, 5.2, 5.4, somewhere in that area. So I stick this in here and I'm reading, that's pretty good, look at that, that's 4.7. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, now, and you don't need to use one of these, again, remember, you can, you can get the uh, pH test strips at, at Walmart. Uh, they work, they'll, they'll give you, they'll put you in the ballpark, don't worry about it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add water I'm gonna add sugar and I'm gonna retest that. I'm gonna test the gravity again and then I'm gonna also test the pH and I'm gonna do the same thing in these two buckets. And then, but I'm gonna add that, uh, that water from the apples into these two buckets. And then we're gonna ferment all of this and see exactly what we get out of that. I'm really, really excited. Looking forward to getting this done. It's gonna take about three weeks, but uh, bear with us. Well, there's nothing left. I've uh, pitched the yeast. As a matter of fact, I made some yeast starters for, and, and I normally don't do that, but uh, I did that as well. So you'll see what I've got here is the two on the outside are the, the mush, must fruits uh, with all the juices and everything and some more water I added up and I added about six pounds of sugar to each one to bring it to 1.090-ish. Uh, and I've got them balanced at the right pH, 5.2. Uh, and the one in the center is just the juice. Yeah, I've got the uh, strawberry, melon, and apple juice all together, and I added about another five pounds of sugar to that because that was really high. And now I'm gonna add six pounds. Yeah, I did add six pounds to that. Uh, I've got that to about 1.090-ish, right there at the same, po same point, and, uh, and I got that balanced at 5.2. So we're gonna give this a couple of weeks to ferment, and uh, we'll catch you on the next edition when uh, we run our brandy through our process. So until next time, happy distilling.